love you like that Taking care of yourself is the love no one else could ever give Exercise and eating healthy, that's the best thing for your body Smoking and drinking will not help, sniffing and drugs you'll hurt yourself You gotta remember to check your blood pressure, you gotta take good care of yourself Who's gonna love you like that? Taking care of yourself is the love no one else could ever give Exercise and eating healthy, that's the best thing for your body Good evening, my viewing audience. I am Shevini Nisbet, your health educator from the Health Promotion Unit, in with this week's edition of Health Matters. Visiting cardiologist Dr. Charlie Rose and his team of the Charlie Rose Cardiac Foundation will be visiting Nevis Monday, the 23rd of February, until Wednesday, the 25th of February. Two of the major activities will be a chef academy. This will be held at the Charleston Primary School. Chef Michael Henville will work with celebrity chef, Chef Marvin Woods to provide education on healthy food and introduce a hydroponic system which will be held at the school. The other major activity will be a cardiac health screening which will be held on Tuesday the 24th of February and this will be hosted at the Cherry Gardens basketball court where the activity will take place from 6 p.m. until 8 p.m. It's free and the, the general public is asked to come on out and get your free screening. And those persons who are interested, we ask that you fast for at least six hours before you come to get your health screening done. So we're asking everybody to come on out, get your screening, because it's important to know your health status. My name is Nicole slack Libert, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Health. I'll be just expanding on the relationship between the Charlie Rouse Foundation and us at the Ministry of Health. Dr. Rouse has been visiting Nevis um, since 2013. He has completed three successful missions to date, working with the population of Nevis. His mission trips have occurred in September 2013, July 2014, and September 2014. His initial visit in 2013, he conducted a needs assessment to determine what services he can best offer to the island. You know, when you're going into a community or a population, you have to determine the needs of the population and not just introduce um, whatever you think is best. And so we really appreciated that Dr. Rouse um, met with Ministry of Health officials and looked at the burden of disease in the population, which is um, heavily focused on diabetes and hypertension. And uh, based on that, we um, sat together and developed um, some programs going forward that we will continue to work on. In his first visit in 2013, he conducted some evaluations of persons um, suffering from cardiac illness, and those persons were referred by the primary care physicians. He also um, conducted health education screenings and conducted health screenings in the St. Paul's and St. James Parish. In addition to that, we are very grateful for the various donations that the Rouse Foundation has provided us at the Ministry of Health. We have received a cardiac treadmill, an echocardiogram, which provides a sonogram of the heart, and a defibrillator, which is used to shock the heart for persons in cardiac arrest, for example. He's also provided medication, glucometers and blood pressure cuffs for our screening activities. He's also gone a step further and provided training for persons operating the equipment. So the treadmill and the echocardiogram, for example, we've had clinicians trained to operate and also to maintain that equipment. And uh, all those activities, I know it's quite a bit, happened in 2013, and so we're very grateful for that. And in September 2014, his, was his second visit, and it was in partnership with us once again in commemoration of Caribbean Wellness Day, which focuses on non-communicable diseases. And during that visit, there was an outreach screening, well, several of them, which included assessing persons at both nursing homes on the island, as well as um, sort of an impromptu screening at the Four Seasons Resort, 
and working with our prison population where 20 men were able to benefit from health education as well as cardiac screening. And we're very proud of this last activity because at the Ministry of Health, we really pride ourselves in bringing services to where the people are and vulnerable populations included. We also received some stethoscopes and glucose testing materials and also followed up again with cardiac patients and high-risk patients for cardiac disease. And as a refresher for what Dr. Rouse did on his last visit, here are some clips from the interview him and I had when he was here the last time. Uh, I'm Dr. Charlie Rouse. Um, I've been asked to come to Davis to participate in evaluating the health um, as it pertains to cardiovascular illness. And when I say cardiovascular illness, I'm speaking specifically about uh, strokes and heart attacks. Um, we've had the opportunity to do some screenings uh, in various clinics and centers around the area uh, and to try to make a determination of how prevalent um, diabetes and hypertension is, whether or not there's issues with being overweight and etc. So uh, part of our mission is to try to um, educate and uh, diagnose and early treat uh, cardiovascular illnesses uh, and diseases that may affect uh, individuals' uh, longevity. Um, <clears throat> we are, uh, have had, um, held several clinics um, in the past with individuals that I've seen last year, uh, and we've also done a, quite a bit of screenings to, uh, with respect to diabetes, uh, obesity, hypertension, body mass index, and etc. So Dr. Well, what, what was done when you were here on your last visit? So on our last visit, um, we got the opportunity to come in um, go to several centers around the area, okay. health centers, mm -hmm. and, uh, and held a cardiovascular clinic as well. In addition to that, we donated some equipment um, that would be utilized to uh, screen individuals that have potential cardiac problems. For instance, uh, treadmill stress testing, um, echocardiogram, and, um, uh, and defibrillator. Okay. The echocardiogram is an ultrasound that gives the opportunity to look at the heart squeeze and the valves and things of that nature to determine if somebody has some sort of illness in that regard. So um, we did quite a bit of screenings. I, I can't remember exactly the number of okay. centers that we uh, went to, but um, quite a bit of screenings and quite a bit of information that we gather. We, what we're trying to do is gather that information analyze that data and then give it back to the Ministry of Health so that they can utilize that information to determine um, where the issues are um, and uh, to determine uh, what kinds of further treatments and things need to be done to, to make the uh, citizens of Nevis more healthy. Wow, and we really appreciate that Absolutely. as one well of the donations. Those are really Absolutely. helpful. And so your findings in terms of like um, it, I know you say you don't have numbers, you don't have exact numbers, but do, what did you find in terms of heart problems in Nevis, heart issues in Nevis? Is it at a high or low in between? Yeah, I, I, I certainly think that, um, that we have found quite a bit of um, uh, heart disease here. And when I, when I say heart disease, I'm speaking sp uh, specifically about um, strokes, um, blockage in the heart arteries, heart attacks. Equally more important, though, is the fact that you have a high incidence of diabetes and hypertension, and those are the kinds of diseases that lead to people developing mm -hmm. cardiovascular illnesses. So um, we were able to screen quite a bit of uh, men and women uh, in your area. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the men don't come out in the numbers that they should, like the women did. Um, but the data held true across the board. That is to say that about 30% of the individuals in whatever center we went to or whatever church, whether or not it was Shallow Baptist or the Franklin Brown Center, whatever center we went to, mm -hmm. the interesting thing about it is about 30% of the women had high blood pressure and 30% of the men had high blood pressure. Wow. Um, the, the data was um, equally true for those who had diabetes. Um, probably under 30% uh, had diabetes in terms of men population, but the female population, there was just under 50% of them had diabetes. So um, I think that uh, to answer your question, whether or not the, there's a problem, absolutely there's a problem, and where's, whether or not there is any opportunity to improve or to treat or diagnose or to um, make the citizens healthier, mm -hmm. absolutely there's an opportunity to do so. 
Okay. So as part of the clinic, sometimes you give advice as to what they can do to um, to lower their chances or to improve upon those who already have the disease. Sure. Um, quite frequently, um, in some of the sessions that we did, we mm -hmm. would go in um, uh, and give a lecture, okay. um, have a dialogue between myself and, and the citizens. And, um, and an opportunity to answer questions, I'd give out some data with respect to what diabetes is, uh, with respect to what hypertension is, and, um, and then we'd have that dialogue, and those sessions would probably last about two hours or so. But very good information come out of that. Um, one, uh, in terms of eating habits, okay. um, two, in terms of exercise habits, Three, in terms of being compliant with taking your medications like you're supposed to. I mean, I was amazed at the number of people who stopped taking their medication because it had some side effects or had some issues or whatever the reason was, or some of them that don't take their medication on a regularly scheduled basis. Right. And those things lead to problems within themselves. If you're taking medicine and it's not effective at controlling the problem that you have, then you're not doing a service to yourself. That's true. We do have a follow-up clinic that we typically do. There are individuals that I've seen who have some cardiovascular problems, who've had open-heart surgery in different countries, who've had valvular abnormalities, who have atrial fibrillation, a rhythm disturbance of the heart, um, who have all kinds of cardiovascular issues. So we get the opportunity to follow them. Mm -hmm. um, the plan, the thought process is to everybody that we've seen we collect data on okay so the thought process is at least to get those individuals to come back to the respective centers the following year so we can determine if we've made a difference or not um, if we told them that you should engage in this sort of exercise program you need to lose weight you need to make sure you're taking your medication we need to make sure that your blood sugar is well controlled we want to know if any of this information that we're providing has made any difference or not. So we want those individuals certainly to come back to the centers. But in addition to that, anybody else that wants to come out, um, welcome to do so. Um, it would be nice if we get the whole island to, I know. <laughs> to I wish. be evaluated. So, Just to go a little further into what the plans are for 2015, Chevenet would have spoken earlier about the Chef Academy, and this will target persons between, well, children between the ages of 9 and 12. And we're really targeting that population because we know the importance of behavior change. And all, in order to adopt healthy lifestyles, it's important that we start with children and not try to introduce something when someone might be in their 30s or 40s, for example, where it becomes more difficult to change behavior. So we're targeting that group um, in particular, and hopefully they can, you know, not only change their behavior, but also that of their families. We're proud that it will be led by our um, local chef here at the School Reels Program, Mr. Michael Henville, as well as Chef Marvin Woods, and celebrity chef Marvin Woods. He has worked with persons such as Michelle Obama in her um, school meals program in the United States and so he'll be working with us here and we're happy to have that. And the hydroponic system that Chevenet also spoke about is where we'll, the Charleston Primary School will receive a unit that can actually grow materials using, using water and not soil and that unit will be based there and um, it can be utilized to in the school meals program at the Charleston Primary School, the vegetables that would be grown there and also in other schools in Nevis as well. And we have the screening at Cherry Gardens and we really encourage all of you to come on out and take advantage and that will be held between 6 and 8 p.m. And those activities will be the main activities for this visit here in February, which is part of our World Cancer Month activities. World Cancer Day happened on, it's commemorated on February 4th, and once again we celebrate a month of activities and we'll conclude our month with activities with the Rouse Foundation. And that has been this week's edition of Health Matters. Thank you for viewing, and I would like to thank the PS of the Ministry of Health, Mrs. Nicole slack Library, for giving us some info on the Rouse Foundation. The fruit of the week is Carambola, or Star Apple as it is locally called. Star Apple is a rich source of vitamin C and other antioxidants. It is also a very low calorie fruit. This fruit also makes a really good juice, so eat up or drink up at least one Star Apple every day this week. Who's gonna
love you like that Taking care of yourself is a love no one else could ever give Exercise and eating healthy, that's the best thing for your body Smoking and drinking will not help Sniffing and drugs you hurt yourself You gotta remember to check your blood pressure You gotta take good care of yourself Who's gonna love you like that? Taking care of yourself is a love no one else could ever give Exercise and eating healthy, that's the best thing for your body 